Hey, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the wild and untamed way. I am Emma Louise Dyson. And today we are going to be diving into the wonderful world of meadow sweet. So whether you are a seasoned witch, a budding herbalist, or you're somebody who just loves to connect in with the wonders of nature, then this is going to be the video for you. So we're going to be exploring everything from how to identify meadow sweet to its wild and its rich history and folklore. I'll be sharing with you my personal story about meadow sweet tea, how it became my go-to remedy. And as always, we're going to touch on some of the magical practices, crystal and herb pairings that you can use to enhance your work with this incredible plant. So are you ready? Let's get started. Meadowsweet, known scientifically as Philopendula or Maria, is a perennial herb that you can find flourishing in damp meadows, ditches, and along riverbanks and canals throughout the UK. This plant is quite distinctive and it's quite easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. It typically grows about three feet tall. It has clusters of tiny, creamy, white, frothy flowers that give off a sweet and almond-like flavour and fragrance. And the leaves are very dark green. They have a serrated edge and they have a downy underside that feels, that makes me want to do this. It feels almost velvety to the touch. The stems are a reddish kind of color and they're very sturdy and this helps the plant to stand tall even in breezy conditions. You'll often find meadow sweet blooming from June until September, although I've seen it as late as the end of October. So next time you're out for a walk in nature, make sure you keep your eyes and your nose peeled for this incredible herb. So meadow sweet, it has a delightful and very unique flavor profile. It tastes delicious and it is often compared to elderflower, but with a distinctive, almond tone to its flavor and its smell. In Europe, it's not uncommon to see meadow sweet flowers added to fruit jams where they impart their gentle almond flavor. And they're also a favorite when it comes to wildflower cordials. You've probably, you know, you're familiar with elderflower cordial, right? Meadow sweet is next level it's my absolute favorite um, but in ancient times it was even added to mead to enhance its flavor which earned the name meadwort i haven't actually had a go at making my own mead yet but um i'm definitely going to try it and also add some meadow sweet to it as well i bet that is absolutely delicious actually i would love to hear from you if you use meadow sweet in your kitchen magic in your culinary creations tell me about it in the comments also if you are loving this video right now if you're getting loads of value already please give it a quick like um it only takes a second it means the world to me and you can also subscribe sub even subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well well, if you like this type of content, because I do a weekly update here on YouTube. So back to meadow sweet. Meadow sweet was one of the three sacred herbs of the Druids, alongside watermint and vervain. The Druids believed that meadow sweet had the power to bring about peace and harmony, which made it a common ingredient in their rituals and in their ceremonies. In medieval times, meadow sweet was often strewn on the floor of homes and churches to freshen the air, but also to ward off any kind of evil spirits. And it was also used in bridal bouquets as well to symbolize love and peace and protection. Archaeologists found the remains of white flowered meadow sweet with the cremated remains of three people and at least one animal in a Bronze Age cairn in Carmarthenshire. So this could indicate that uh, either the honey based mead or a flavored ale was actually placed in the grave or the plant itself was placed on the grave as a scented flower, a, a last offering to the departed. I love that. Moving on to the medicinal side of meadowsweet. So meadowsweet is 
a true gem when it comes to the world of natural healing. If you follow me, you know that I am big on keeping things natural. Um, however, this is a powerhouse. In fact, every time you reach for an aspirin based product, you owe a debt to Meadowsweet. It's actually been reported that um, this herb, Meadowsweet, it was from this herb that salicylic acid was actually first obtained in 1835. So salicylic acid, the, the natural forerunner to aspirin, is what makes Meadowsweet an excellent remedy for pain and inflammation. It's particularly effective for headaches, but also for muscle pain and for arthritis as well. I make my own painkiller tea. I add Meadowsweet, a willow bark, St. John's wort and feverfew to boiling water. Um, these the um, ingredients like willow bark and feverfew also contain salicylic acid. So it's a very simple and a very easy but effective way to reduce pain. It is my go-to. Um, I don't like to take pharmaceuticals, so if you're like me, then this could be your go-to as well. It's also been administered as a diuretic as well. So this increases urine output in people that may have kidney or bladder infections. Um, I just wanna preface this right now by saying I am not a doctor and it is always best to speak with a medical professional, a healthcare professional before trying anything, especially Meadowsweet. And especially if you're already taking medications, um, for pre-existing conditions if you take aspirin use this herb with caution because it contains salicylic acid um, which is the active compound of course the active sorry component in aspirin um, and if you have an aspirin allergy or if you have um, if you're sensitive to um, salicylic acid uh, if you have severe asthma avoid using Meadowsweet to get all together, right? Um, also, if you're pregnant and breastfeeding, but always can consult a medical professional beforehand. Um, so for centuries, people have turned to Meadowsweet as this natural painkiller, but it's um, also uh, an anti-inflammatory. It also has soothing properties, which make it ideal for treating conditions like acid reflux, gastritis, heartburn. In fact, let me share my personal story with you because for years I struggled with terrible acid reflux, right? Nothing seemed to help at all. I tried absolutely everything. I was even taking pharmaceuticals and it just wasn't doing anything. Um, as soon as I laid down, it would be just awful, right? I couldn't sleep. But it wasn't until I started drinking Meadowsweet tea that I found relief. Literally just one cup of this tea and my symptoms had completely gone. And it was literally like a magical cure for me. And since then, I have been a devoted fan of Meadowsweet, even though I no longer struggle with acid reflux. So there we go, my personal story about this incredible herb. So let's have a look at some of the magical properties of Meadowsweet, because here in the wild and untamed way, we love all natural medicine, but we also love shamanic witchcraft and magic. So Meadowsweet offers a beautiful array of emotional and spiritual benefits. It's especially supportive for those who are feeling quite rigid or inflexible due to fear or due to anger. So it can help you to learn to let go and to relax. It's a gentle herb that acts um, really as a an, an opening remedy. It can help to really subtly expand the psyche, can help to dissolve emotional barriers, um, while also kind of pro providing a very soothing and a very strengthening effect as well. Meadowsweet is particularly suited for women who may feel over self-confident, uh, self-conscious or shy, um, especially around sexuality, especially if you've experienced any kind of trauma. Um, it provides reassurance and comfort. It encourages self-confidence. It can really empower women to stand tall, to face the world with grace. And it's also highly beneficial as well to those that hold tension in their head and their neck because it can really help to ease both physical and emotional stress as well. 
magically this herb is associated with the planet jupiter it is associated with the element of water and it really infuses it with like these expansive healing and nurturing energies witchy folklore tells us that meadow sweet can be used to invoke elemental spirits particularly those of water and air um, its connection to these elements makes it a very powerful ally in spells that are aimed at emotional healing and clarity and communication but it can also be used in love spells to attract harmonious and nurturing relationships it's also wonderful for any spells or rituals that are aimed at peacemaking or emotional healing so simply adding meadow sweet to a spell jar or a sachet or even brewing it into a tea can really enhance your intentions with its very calming and balancing energy incorporating meadow sweet into your spell work can also help to open channels of communication there we go my throat chakra is opening um and also help with understanding as well so it makes it a really powerful herb for resolving conflicts and for fostering a sense of community and unity it's also associated with the gift of courage and protection and it also may be used to attune to the fairy realm as well the flower's perfume can have a sedative effect that can help a person commune with the Great Mother. And garlands of meadowsweet were actually worn at Lammas, which is actually when I'm recording this video right now on Lammas. And it is said to join the wearer with the essence of the goddess. Happy Lammas, by the way. And if you'd like to learn more about the pagan festival of Lammas or Lunasa, check out my previous two videos. Um, I've done two videos on how to celebrate and also some crystal and herb pairings. And while we are talking about pairings, let's talk about some pairings for Meadowsweet. So there are several different combinations that can enhance its magical and its medicinal properties. For example, combining Meadowsweet with chamomile creates a very soothing tea that can help with digestion digestive issues and promote relaxation, while Kami, uh, combining it with lavender um, creates a very powerful blend for peace and emotional healing. You can use this combination in a calming bath soak or as part of a bedtime ritual that can also help to promote restful sleep and sweet dreams. Add a pinch of mugwort in there as well if you want to do a little prophetic dreaming or some astral travel or some dream recollection. For those that are interested in more robust herbal blends, Meadowsweet is a beautiful blend with peppermint. So this combination not only supports digestive health, but it also helps to invigorate the senses. So it's a great choice for any kind of refreshing or revitalizing herbal teas. I love that, especially if I'm having a bit of a lull in the afternoon. Um, let's talk about some crystal pairings now. So there are lots that use together with Meadowsweet these natural allies can really amplify our intentions and also deepen our magical practice. First of all, amethyst. Amethyst is known for its soothing and its protective qualities. It complements Meadowsweet's calming energy perfectly. So you can use these together in rituals that are aimed at emotional healing. Rose quartz is another crystal that pairs beautifully with Meadowsweet. Both are associated with love and again, emotional healing. So you can use Meadowsweet in a love spell with Rose quartz, and this can amplify your intentions of attracting or nurturing a loving relationship. Finally, clear quartz. It's known as the master healer. It's a fantastic partner for Meadowsweet because it can amplify the healing properties of the herb. Now you've probably heard that clear quartz amplifies the energy of other crystals, but it also amplifies the energy of different herbs as well. So this is a really powerful combination for any health related spells or rituals. Use them together in a crystal grid or in an elixir to boost your physical and your spiritual well-being. Um, we can also work with Meadowsweet in our shamanic practices as well. So as a British shamanic witch, I don't personally use very often white sage for cleansing my space or as much as I love Palo Santo, it doesn't feel native to me. Well, it's not native to me, so I don't like to use it. 
but what you can use is meadow sweet and you can use these in your smoke cleansing rituals to purify your space and to invite in more harmonious energies all you need to do get some meadow sweet bundle the leaves and the flowers together tie them with some twine or some string hang them up let them dry and then once they're dry you would light the end to create cleansing smoke just like you would any other smudging stick or saining this practice not only purifies the space but it also aligns it with the peaceful and the healing energies of meadow sweet as well you could also you know mix this with different herbs that grow locally to you i like to add mugwort or yarrow or st john's wort to my smudging sticks but you do you so there we go folks magical meadow sweet one of my absolute favorite forageables this time of year i'm recording this on the first of august um have a look find it yourself let me know in the comments if you found it and what you're going to be using it for and before we wrap up today i would like to invite you to come and join me in our free community on the book of face it is a vibrant community we're going to delve deeper into magical and medicinal properties of wild herbs just like meadowsweet you'll find different tips you'll be able to share experiences connect with like-minded souls who are also passionate about living in harmony with the changing of the seasons and the wheel of the year so if this sounds like you it's completely free click on the link in the description and join us over in the wild and untamed ones that's who we are, the wild and untamed ones. So there we go, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, if you want to learn more and uh, appreciate more content on earth medicine, magic and shamanic witchcraft, then uh, hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on my weekly updates. Your support means the world to me. Until next time, stay wild, stay curious, and of course, stay cool, won't you? I will see you in the next video.